So how are the matched filter, the zero forcing receiver, and the minimum mean squared error receiver related? And we're going to look at this digital communications example where X is a vector, H is a matrix. And this applies, for example, to an uplink CDMA scenario where the elements of the X vector are the symbols from the different users. It also applies to a MIMO scenario where you have a single user but there's multiple antennas. And this is a standard signal model. For more information on this model and the scalar version where we look at the channel inversion and the match filter in that case, uh, there are two other videos on this channel and you'll find the information in the link below uh, to, to find the links to those videos. Okay, so let's uh, now look at the uh, what we're going to be doing now. So now we've got our estimate x equals, and I'm going to use the letter w for the filter that we're applying. So over here in the scalar case, uh, we just had a scalar. We were multiplying either by h to the minus 1 in the channel inverse case, or h con uh, complex conjugate in the match filter case. Now we have a a vector which we're receiving. So now we're in the vector space as these examples I discussed down here. And so you've got uh, either the possibility of multi-user interference, which was in the CDMA case. If the codes were not orthogonal, you would have multi-user interference. And in the MIMO case, you would have multi-stream interference. So now we've got not just noise, we've got interference when we look at the vector case. Okay, so what are the choices of W that we can make? Uh, Let's now look, I'll put a box around this. This is the uh, filter that we're going to be applying. We're going to look at different values for this filter. Okay, so let's first of all look at zero forcing. Okay, so zero forcing is analogous to the channel inverse over here. Okay, so in zero forcing, we choose uh, the, we can say x hat zero forcing equals, we choose w to be exactly analogous to this. We do take the inverse of the matrix H. Okay, and in this case, as we had in the scalar case, we get x plus h inverse times n. And exactly the same that we had before in the scalar case, we've got a problem now of potential. It's good news that we've got x back to being, we've separated the, if it's the, uh, the two data streams in the MIMO case or the two users in the CDMA case, uh, we have now separated those streams out uh, separately, which is Fantastic, we've got them uh, without interference from each other uh, because we've zero, and that's what zero forcing means, it's forcing the interference to zero. Uh, but we've got the possibility of noise enhancement and we've got a real problem if the channel matrix H is not full rank. So if you can't invert the channel matrix H, then you've got uh, real problems with the zero forcing approach. Okay, what about the matched filter approach then? So in match filtering, the approach is so x hat match filter. So in this case, I'll just include uh, the scaling that we had for this, uh, just so we got the scaling right on here. Um, but the filter is h complex conjugate. So we use the dagger for complex conjugate of a matrix. Okay, so in this case, um, I'm uh, we've got this times h x plus n. Now I'm just going to expand this out to get a little more insight into this. So in this case, we've got uh, the this square root of nt on p. I'm going to do the expansion that I did uh, down here with the h, uh, h1 and h2. So I'm going to write h dagger as h in, in terms of its components. So now we've got h1 dagger on top of h2 dagger. That's what this, uh, this um, matrix here is in terms of its components. And this matrix is uh, of course, h1 is the first column and h2 is the second column uh, times x plus. Uh, we've got the h dagger times n. I'm just going to leave that um, on its own uh, because that's just the noise. We're not seeing anything about the interference here. So I want to look at the interference here. So let's look at this matrix here. So what is this matrix? And don't forget x is has got its components x1 and x2. That's a vector. Okay, so I'm just going to take this component here and write out that component uh, as it's it's going to be a vector, of course, because this is this is going to be a matrix times a vector. So we're going to end up with a vector. So the first element of the vector is going to be h1 dagger times h1 times the first element of x plus h1 dagger times h2 
uh, times the second element of x. So that's the first element of the overall vector. And then the second element is h2 dagger times h1 times the first element of x plus h2 dagger h2 times the second element of x. So that's a vector uh, that we're getting by multiplying by the match filter. And let's just observe this vector here for a moment. Uh, let's say, for example, let's say just take the case where the two different uh, channels are orthogonal. So if it was the CDMA case and H1 was orthogonal to H2, as we saw before down here, then this term here would be zero and this term here would be zero. And what you would get is you would get H1 dagger H1, X1 as the first element, and H2 dagger H2 as the second element, and there would be no interference. And that would be exactly what we had over here in the scalar case. So if there is no interference at all, then a match filter is a good thing to do. It maximizes the signal to noise ratio, and if there is no interference, then that's, that's, a, that's a good thing to do. But you can see now if there is interference, if these codes were not orthogonal or in the MIMO case where they are, uh, they are given to you by the physics of the environment, so they're unlikely to be orthogonal, then you will have these terms in the match filter equation. And these terms can be significant. So even though you are maximizing the signal to noise ratio for the signal of interest, you are not taking into account the interference and the interference could cause major problems. And you can see that it's, that's gonna be the case here. So if H1 dagger times H2 is not close to zero, then you won't be able to separate out the two data streams and recover the original signals. So the match filter would not be a good thing to do if you have a lot of uh, interference coming from these two uh, not being orthogonal in your channel. Okay, so just to re recap, so zero forcing is a good thing to do, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't do much good for your signal to noise ratio if your channel has an inversion problem. So in this case, uh, you, you get a, a good, easy way to detect, but, uh, and it's great in terms of you've zeroed out all of the interference, but you've got a signal to noise ratio problem. In the second case, you've got a good signal to noise ratio, but if you've got interference, that's gonna cause you a problem. So these are two extremes. You can view these as two extremes of the scenario. And how do you go about picking between the two? And that's where minimum mean squared error comes in. So in minimum mean squared error uh, decoding, uh, then he will uh, we'll write this one down here. Uh, so in this case, uh, W, it, the, the minimum mean squared error uh, answer equals the argument of the when you minimize over W of the mean, that's the mean, so this is the minimum, this is the mean of the square of the error. So, and this is X minus WY squared. So this is the minimum mean squared error. So you're minimizing over W, you're picking a W, so you're, you're picking the, the filter that you're gonna apply, which minimizes the mean of the squared error term between X and W, Y. So this one, I'm going to write out the solution to this. I'm not going to derive it all here, but this equals the uh, square root of NT divided by P uh, of H dagger of H, H dagger plus uh, NT on SNR uh, times I N R to the minus one. Uh, and this is where SNR uh, equals P divided by N. And so this is the equation here that we have, where the SNR equals P on N naught. Also, you can use the what's called the matrix inversion lemma, and you can see that it's also equal to NT divided by P times H dagger H. There's two different versions of it. I'm just gonna write it out here. Uh, um, for uh, because both of them are, are interesting to give insights um, to the minus one times h dagger. Okay, so these are two different versions, or two different ways of writing the minimum mean squared error filter. And now let's finally just look at the relationship between the match between this one and the match filter and the zero forcing, and we can see that this filter gives us a trade-off between those two filters. So let's consider the two extremes 
um, cases. So first of all, just for example, let's consider the case when the SNR is really big. So in the, in the case when the SNR is really big, uh, then uh, this, let's look at this first term here. So in the case when SNR is really big, this term here uh, essentially goes to zero, disappears. If SNR goes to infinity, this goes to zero. And then apart from the uh, scaling term, let's write down what we're left with. So in that case, we are left with, so SNR goes really big. We are left with H dagger uh, times in, in the inverse here, we have H, H dagger, in the inverse. And this equals, you can put the inverse in here, so you've got h dagger and then you've got h dagger inverse times h inverse, and this equals of course 1, so you're just left with, or unity, the identity matrix, so you're left with h inverse. So in this case you have the zero forcing solution. Okay, so if you, uh, if you have the um, uh, and, and sort of an infinite amount of SNR, then you don't need to um, uh, worry about the uh, the noise enhancement, um, and you can have uh, 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 then you can do the zero forcing filter, and it, the Mac, and the MMSE filter actually becomes that filter. So as SNR goes very big, you can see that the MMSE filter approaches the zero forcing filter. So that's, uh, that's a very important uh, observation about how this minimum mean squared error filter relates to the zero forcing filter. Okay, and um, what about the, uh, another case, the opposite sort of case, let's say low interference. So in the low interference case, uh, in that case, we've got, um, let's look at this second term here, the second way of looking at it. In that case, um, well, when there's low interference, then we're going to be close to this situation that we had up here um, in the CDMA case where they were actually zero interference. And in the matrix case, that means that H dagger H is going to be approaching a diagonal matrix. And if H dagger H approaches a diagonal matrix, then that matrix here approaching a diagonal matrix, well this is a diagonal matrix, so this entire term here will be a diagonal matrix, which really means you're just essentially scaling the elements of what you get from doing H dagger times the received. So in this case, this just becomes a scalar, a scaling factor, and the only rotation that's happening is from H dagger. So in this case, you are, you are giving the, um, the, the solution comes to be H dagger. So that implies H dagger. Okay, so in this case, when the SNR goes high from MMSE, we've seen that it approaches the zero forcing. And when the interference goes low, approaches zero, then it, the MMSE filter approaches the matched filter. Okay, because H dagger was the matched filter times a scalar, uh, or a scaling factor. But it's just a scaling factor. It doesn't rotate things around because it's diagonal. Okay, so hopefully this has given you a, a lot of insight into the relationship between the MMSE filter, the zero forcing filter, and the matched filter, and how the MMSE gives you a trade-off between the two, uh, and uh, it's, it means you don't have the uh, noise enhancement so much problem of zero forcing, or the, uh, the problem for, of interference when you have simply a matched filter. So if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the information below the video for links to other videos and a web page where there's a full categorized list of videos on the channel.